So, you know, you spoke a bit about semantics, right? And we've been yeah. through this before. We yeah. know that the way, to your point, that Trump talks, pre sorry, former President Trump talks, Correct. is that yeah. he, you know, makes these large statements that get people's attention. Yeah. Do you think in this case, it's dangerous, the kind of um, conversation he's having around, you know, saying some of our allies or some of these Western nations that aren't paying their obligation are going to be, you know, let go to whatever Russia would like of them. Do you think that's dangerous? Or do you think, in all honesty, you know, six years, eight, seven years out of having been familiar with former President Trump as a political figure and politician, that this isn't as dangerous as some of the pundits would have it seem. Well, I'm sure it's not as dangerous as some of the pundits would have it seem because some of the pundits have their hair perpetually on fire. I mean, the dial is continually turned to 11. I mean, the sky is always falling. So sure, but that's not a, I don't think you meant that question because that, that's not a useful question. I think the question that you meant was the beginning of it, which is, is this really dangerous? And I, I would say it goes beyond unhelpful. It goes beyond unhelpful. Um, and, and the reason it goes beyond unhelpful is because we are not presently in peacetime. Uh, the, if he were saying this and there wasn't a war going on in Europe, I would I would say it's it's braggadocio. It's meant to drive headlines. But the allies will find a way to, like, talk him off the ledge, find something that satisfies him, sh show Trump that he's the deal maker in chief. And 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 he actually will get more money out of these guys, which he did to a degree the first time around, though not to the two percent level that he was demanding. But but this time around, you know, you're, the backdrop is that Russia has invaded a sovereign country, and the Europeans are spending on that, and the Americans are talking about maybe not, um, and lives are being lost. And Trump has said he will end the war in Ukraine in a day. And this is the same Trump that pushed Zelensky very hard um, to open an investigation into Trump's political adversary, or else he wasn't going to send them weapon systems that they needed to defend themselves. I mean, in that context, uh, this will prove more of a threat to the basic functioning of NATO. Um, and I, I, I do think that the Europeans are panicking over this. Uh, it is, uh, you know, it, th this is something that makes, that makes the Europeans feel like they cannot count on the United States long-term, again, in a way that goes beyond posture. Um, so I, I do think that there is some damage. Now, I think that there's a reasonable point to be made that that Trump would that Trump is not just talking about I want them to pay two percent. I I think that Trump really doesn't like NATO. Um, I I think that he believes that NATO is um a a mugs game, where the Americans just get taken advantage of. Uh, the U.S. is a very strong country in the Western hemisphere with the Canadians, the Mexicans integrated through USMCA, which was a trade deal that he upgraded um, and two big bodies of water. And that the United States shouldn't have to spend all this money defending countries way, way over there, that they take advantage of it. Um, and so I, I think that if it were up to Trump, I doubt that it, if Trump becomes president uh, next year, I doubt he'll be okay with the, the ex-ante position of 2% GDP spend. I think he'd push for a lot more than that this time around. Um, and I also think that he would push more um, on uh, opening questions of whether the United States should be committed and under what conditions um, to defending an ally if there was an invasion. Um, and so I think there is a lot more at stake here. Look, uh, the, the, the big issue is that an, uh, the analogy I'll give you is that if you are flying a plane at 40,000 feet and it's sunny and the weather's perfect, no wind, 
and, and you give the the controls suddenly to an untested and untrusted pilot for a few minutes, you will probably be just fine. Now, you take that same plane and you try to land it in a typhoon and you can't see the runway, then you give the controls to that untested, untrusted pilot. There's a good chance you're going to crash that plane. And, and I would argue that the plane's the same, NATO, uh, but the environment today is, the, is much closer to the second environment. And so we cannot, even if it's the same Trump, same pilot, uh, we should not be treating this environment as the same.